First of all, though, I want to say that usually when we talk about healing injuries, we think about forgiveness. And I guess from the point of view of emotionally focused couples therapy, which is trying to create secure bonds between couples, there is a sense in which the forgiveness of these injuries is the booby prize. Because the EFT therapist does not just want people to forgive each other. If you look in the literature on forgiveness, um, a lot of the literature on forgiveness is very abstract, very moral, talks about becoming rational, letting go of resentment. So from an EFT point of view, um, that there's something missing there about emotional process, but also um, it's really, it's not okay to just have somebody cognitively, cognitively forgive or let go of resentment. What we want in EFT is the kind of healing of toxic injuries and forgiveness of key violations of human connection, because that's how we see them. What we want is not just forgiveness, but we want the kinds of emotional forgiveness that allows you to be open again and leads to reconciliation that leads to the ability to trust again. So that's what we are after in EFT. There are not um, many research studies on helping distressed couples heal injuries in their relationship, whether they're affairs or other kinds of moments of real injury that people just can't get past. There are really only two approaches that have been really studied. One is the um, more CBT approach, and um, basically, let me see if I can remember her name, Gordon Backham and Schneider have done um, a small study looking at forgiveness in couples. And from their point of view, they focused a lot on helping people give up resentment and they structured a lot of um, communication sequences where people could start to understand the meaning of the injury and accept what had happened. I think um, this is pretty different from what we do in EFT where we focus much more on processing of difficult emotions and um, moving people into really being able to connect again. We have one study in the EFT literature on forgiveness. In that study we found that 65% of the people who came in to the study with very serious injuries that were causing distress in their relationship were able to really reach forgiveness, were able to learn to trust each other again and be open to each other, and that those 65%, three years later, the results were stable. So this is very encouraging. Um, the people who did not, many of the couples who were in, not in that 65%, ended up having their relationship improved, but they didn't get through into really being able to say that the injury was finished and they could really forgive and they didn't completely repair their relationship. And many of those couples had dual injuries. Both partners had hurt each other very seriously. And what they told us in the exit interviews was that we hadn't given them long enough. We gave them in that study, we gave them 13 sessions, which maybe isn't enough for a seriously distressed couple who have very serious injuries to work through. So I think maybe I'm going to stop the intro there and I'm going to back up a little bit and talk to you about EFT because I need to put the whole discussion of injuries and um, in the context of the model of EFT. And I haven't got that many slides in this webinar. I think the main way I decided that I wanted to have you help you understand these injuries is to tell you stories, so I'm going to do that. Um, perhaps it's worth stating right from the beginning that when we went in and started looking at these kinds of injuries, we thought about them as traumas. We thought about them as trauma with a small t, um, because from the point of view of attachment theory, it is indeed traumatizing. It induces helplessness. If you think about the definitions of trauma, it induces helplessness in people to suddenly find that the person they depend on cannot be depended on. That the person that they think about as the solution to fear is now a source of fear. 
This completely destabilizes people, confuses them, creates helplessness, which is the main definition of trauma. <clears throat> the essence of trauma is helplessness. So we think about these kinds of injuries as relationship traumas. And I'm not talking <coughs> I'm not talking about the kind of general um, compounded hurts that nearly every couple that come to see you have, um, where they can talk about their hurts for a long time. I'm talking about people that have hurts, but there's one or two particular incidents that completely stand out that are like um, time bombs that have gone off in the relationship and that sabotage every attempt to get the couple to be open and to really be able to trust each other. These are not just hurts that have been compounded or negative patterns of interaction. These are more like real specific traumas. If you ask me how many couples have these, it's kind of difficult to know. But if you ask me to guess... I would say between 30 and 40 percent of couples that come in to see you have these traumatic injuries and of course some injuries are much more significant than others.